Hi everyone, I'm Rin Lei and I'm a second year PhD student in the Geography Department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today, I would like to share with you my work about calibrating the dynamic half model for business analysis using location big data. So first of all, just to give you some background information about the traditional half model. The idea of this model is to estimate the trade area, which contains potential customers for a particular store. So this information can be really useful because uh, every, everyone usually has a preference to go to a particular store when they do grocery shopping or different types of shopping. So it is important for business owner to know how many potential customers they might have for that store in order to predict the market share of that store uh, in comparison to all different kinds of competitors. So this traditional half model can help us to do that estimation. And there are two key factors in that model. The first one is the attractiveness, where it can be considered as the merchandise offering. So usually we can use the store size or the amount of goods in one store to represent that attractiveness. It shows that how the store is attractive in terms of the customers. And the second factor is the travel distance or say the travel time, because um, it is an important factor that people take into consideration when they decide which store to visit. Like they usually like a, a, a store that is in close to them. And um, traditionally for estimating the trade area, there are some different sources of data such as membership surveys or transaction data in order to analyze how many potential customers the store have. Um, but there are some limitations such as the uh, coverage of this data and also the sampling bias. So the traditional half model actually provides a modeling way to provide a more uh, comprehensive view of the uh, customers. So this is the actual formula of the half model where we actually predicting the probability of a customer I visiting a store J and it can be denoted as the formula here. So here, the SJ means the attractiveness of the store J, and the DIJ means the distance between the customer I and the store J. And the two uh, parameters, alpha and beta, are used to adjusting the model and to calibrate it. And the N here is the total number of stores in consideration. So that is the total number of stores a customer I will visit. And on the uh, right hand side is our two images showing the visiting flow to two different types of stores. So the top one are the uh, visiting flow from each census block group to the five Whole Foods market in Los Angeles. And the bottom one are the visiting visits uh, to the Ross stores in that area. So one interesting to notice is that here, um, the two Whole Foods market are actually separated by a highway. And in this case, even though some census block groups are closer to two of them, they will only go to the store that is in the same side with them in terms of the highway. And uh, um, there's one limitation from the traditional half model that it only gives one value to represent the visiting probability from the customer to the store. But we actually know that in reality, there are some temporal variations in terms of the visiting probability. So here, the map shows the location of the five Whole Foods markets in Los Angeles, while the, this plot shows that the visiting probability in each hour during a one week period. So we can see that even for the same type of brand, people show different visiting uh, temporal visiting patterns in different stores. So with that in consideration, we would like to propose a time-aware dynamic half model to estimate the hourly visiting probability. And we would like to answer two research questions. The first one is, 
how accurate is the dynamic half model in predicting the market share of different types of businesses. So there are two examples, the supermarkets versus the department store. And the second research question is, how do geographic and socioeconomic factors determine the customer choice of particular store visits? So here is the um, actual formula for the dynamic half models. We have two ways to adding the temporal variation information into the original half model. The first way we call this model T half model, where we basically times a temporal variation probability into the original half model. So here the PJT is the temporal visiting probability for one store J within a temporal time window. And uh, we can see that this PJT is all actually calculated by using the number of visits for that store in that time window, divided by all the store visits that store J will have. And the other way to add in the uh, temporal information, we call this model the A advanced, uh, the A model, which uses the concept from the advanced half model. And here, the PJT can be considered as a um, factor to time the attractiveness of each store. That is to say, the attractiveness of each store is actually related to the temporal changes. And uh, it shows that the PJ, PIJT we obtain has the meaning that it shows the visiting probability of a customer I visiting a store J within a temporal window T compared with all these stores that that customer I will visit at the same time window. So um, in terms of the actual data we use, we use the safe graph place visit data, which contains the visiting information from different census block groups to uh, different types of P uh, POI, aka point of interest. So there are a few important attributes we need to include. The first one is the number of raw visits, where we use this attribute to represent attractiveness of each point of interest. And the other important attributes is the origin neighborhoods of visitors. Using that information, we're able to build the uh, visiting flow from the origin census block group to the destination point of interest. And we pick two types of point of interest as our study goes. The first type is the supermarkets and grocery stores, which is represented by the Whole Foods and Trader Joe's in our study. And the other type is the department store, which is represented by the raw stores. And we would like to compare if there are any visiting pattern differences between those two types of point of interest. And we also have the data across the 10 most populated US cities. So on the right hand side, we have a log log plot for the visiting distances. So here, this plot actually shows the famous distance decay phenomena, where it means that the probability of traveling is decreased when the distance is increasing. And the different colors represent the data for different cities. So before we use the actual model to make predictions, we need to do the parameter calibrations in order to find the actual, the best alpha and beta that fits the uh, situation of the study area. So the objective of the calibration is to find parameters that maximize the correlation between the two visiting probabilities. So the P estimate is the estimated probability from our model. And the P actual is the actual visiting probability calculated from our ground truth data. That is the data provided by SafeGraph. And the algorithm we used for, it, uh, for optimization is the particle swarm optimization. For the implementation, we have all our source code available and some of the data uploaded to the GitHub repository. If you are interested, you can feel free to take a look. And we did the same parameter calibration process to different brands in order to identify any visiting pattern differences. And we did the same process for 10 cities in order to 
uh, discover any regional variability. So here comes to our result part. So this is the result from the optimization. The two tables shows the optimal correlation we can obtain from using different alpha and beta values. So the process is that we first pick some predefined alpha and beta value in order to narrow down the optimal range, the range for the optimal value. And here we can see that in general, all alpha and beta values has a, uh, a relatively high correlation. And we obtain the highest correlation of 0 0.86 for um, using the alpha equals to 0 0.72 and the beta equals to 0 0.81. And similarly, we did this for T half model as well as the A half model. And it turns out that the T half model actually shows slightly higher optimal uh, correlation result compared with the traditional half model. And uh, on the right side, it's the map shows the estimate market share of the Whole Foods Market stores in Los Angeles using the traditional half model. So here, the color of each census block group shows the dominant store they will visit. And the saturation of the color shows that the scale of the visiting probability. So those two maps are the result from the T-half model, where um, instead, of, instead of only having one map for the result, we have the map at different day and different time of the day. So this is the map for Sunday 3 p.m. And we can see that similarly, the color represents the store and the skill, the color saturation represents the visiting skill. So we also did a comparison, change comparison map. Uh, here is a red area shows the is the area where we the estimate probability is slightly higher than actual visiting probability, and the green area shows where we have uh, we underestimate the visiting probability. And even though uh, no matter this is red or green, the scale of the uh, differences is actually very small, and we obtain a very high correlation for the t path model. And here is the map shows the optimal beta value for across different stores and different cities. We would like to use this value uh, to discover any brand's comparison and regional variability. So here, if we look row by row, we are actually comparison compare the results between different cities. And we actually find something about the travel distance decay. That is to say, people in large metropolitan areas with a well-developed transit system shows less sensitivity to long distance travel. Examples including uh, New York, San Diego, Philadelphia, and Chicago. So here, use New York as an, as an example we can see that it has a very low beta value across all models and all brands. Where a small beta value here means that people are less separated spatially. So it indicates that the transportation mode is pretty good at those areas and people are less separated and it's easier to travel for them to travel long distance in those cities. Which I think Kind of makes sense because as we knew, we know New York, Sandy, uh, New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago, those are really uh, big cities with good public transportation as well as uh, support self-driving a lot. And another thing we would like to mention from this table is that if we compare the average beta value across different brands, we can find that in the raw stores with the nine cities that we have records for raw stores, six out of them actually have a smaller beta value uh, compared with the value for Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. That, mean, that is to say that people show less sensitivity to long distance trip when they are visiting raw stores. And, they, and distance plays an, a more important role when people are visiting grocery stores like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. This corresponds to our daily experience that 
because grocery stores usually show sell a uh, similar types of foods. So you will usually go to the cloister one. But for department stores, as the things sold in different department stores can be different, you are more willing to travel longer to a particular department store that you want to go. And in addition to this, we also did a regression analysis to detect how the geographic and socioeconomic factors might affect people's choice to visit different stores. And we did a regression uh, model which used the following independent variables to predict the pairwise visit from each POI to it, uh, from each census block group to each point of interest. And it turns out that total visit counts, distance, and mid median house income are statistically significant uh, when people are visiting those stores. And the race and ethnicity the diversity is particularly important for Trader Joe's analysis. And the median age plays an important role when we do analysis to raw stores. So to conclude here, to answer and to answer the two questions we proposed at the beginning, the calibrated dynamic half model is more accurate than the traditional model. And in, in terms of predicting the market share of different types of businesses. And secondly, the spatial proximity, demographics, demographic and socioeconomic factors do have significant impacts on the customer's choice of particular stores to visit. And there exists regional variability for stock business patterns, as well as for different types of stores. So that's all for my presentation today. Thank you very much for watching.